so aff affective computing has lots of applications. To today I'll talk about some in healthcare that include sensors. Actually, I'm, I'm wearing a couple of them right now. Uh, sensors that measure aspects of our emotional system changing and can enable us to learn about things like how stress impacts our sleep, how it uh, interacts with our activity, and also some special conditions related to autism and epilepsy. Unlike the mood rings, this is not just measuring temperature, although it does also measure skin surface temperature. It's measuring the electrical changes in the skin that are activated by your sympathetic nervous system. And that's the part of your autonomic nervous system that basically keeps your heart revved uh, and really is responsible for the fight or flight response, one of our primary stress uh, responses. When I was a junior faculty member, I thought I should get somebody else interested in working on this because it seemed very important. And it also seemed like it would probably wreck my career if I did it. So as a woman in science, I thought, oh dear, this is the last thing I want to be associated with. Uh, so it actually took quite a bit of courage for me to be willing to talk about emotion. There are so many times in the world when people's emotions are ignored or neglected or completely misunderstood, where what is happening on the outside is in contrast with what's going on on the inside. And those misunderstandings cause people to make poor decisions. They cause people to be wrongly treated in healthcare systems sometimes. They also lead to a lot of wasted money in business when you think you're pleasing your customer, but you're not. When we get technologies out that help people opt in and communicate their feelings more accurately, then we can solve a lot of the problems that we have today.